Hello Year 4, this is your RE lesson for Thursday the 28th of January. Let's just pause before we start the lesson and take some time for ourselves. So we're all busy at home with our home learning, we're busy recording lessons for you and sharing feedback. So let's just take some time to still ourselves. If you use the animation on the screen, you can really focus on your breathing for a few moments. Just calm your mind and your body as we prepare for our RE lesson today. Okay, let's just start by recapping what we did last lesson. If you think back to our last RE lesson, we are in our revelation unit of work, aren't we? So far, we've been thinking about the story of Anna and Simeon, and then we've been looking at our responsibility to care for the poor and helpless. And last lesson, we looked at a song called One Small Voice. Okay, so think back to the lyrics that we looked at for One Small Voice. So my question, just to get us thinking this morning, is Christians have a responsibility to care for the poor and helpless. So do you agree with that? Do you want to build on that? Or do you want to challenge that statement? So if you're in school with the key worker group, then Mrs. Chamberlain can pause the video for you to have a discussion here. If you're at home, you can talk to somebody that's with you. Or if nobody's working with you today and you're working on your own, that's fine. Just take a moment to think for yourself and I'll discuss my ideas in just a moment. Okay, I hope you've had a chance to discuss that and share some ideas. If not, let's talk about some now. So Christians have a responsibility to care for the poor and helpless. I agree with that. So I was thinking back to the One Small Voice song that we looked at last time. And I was thinking in particular about some of the lyrics. So there were lyrics like, I need your love. And we saw some images in the video that I shared of people around the world struggling with different problems, whether it's not having enough food, not having enough clothing, not being warm or safe, or having to leave their homes, being refugees, things like that. So I agree, it is a big responsibility for Christians to care for the poor and helpless, people that can't necessarily help themselves because of the situations that they find themselves in. Another, another phrase I remember from the lyrics was, don't take away my chance to be free. So it's really important we help people who are trapped with problems. I was thinking about being trapped in problems where you don't have enough money or you don't have a safe place to live or enough food to eat. It's our responsibility to care for everybody in the world, isn't it? God created all of us because he loves us and wants the best for all of us. And we're here on earth to do his work, to help others, aren't we? So I definitely agree. It is our responsibility to care for the poor and helpless. I also thought I could build on that. And it's not just caring for the poor and helpless, is it? We also need to care for one another. We're all very fortunate and we all got nice homes and safe places to live and enough food to eat. And we make sure that everybody in our school community has access to enough fresh food and fruit and vegetables and things like that and access to clothing or anything that they need. So sometimes it's about helping people in our lives and in our own communities and we're all experiencing a really difficult time at the moment, whether that's personally and emotionally or whether our family are facing difficulties, perhaps your parents are key workers and they have to go to work and put themselves at risk. So we really need to take care of one another at this time as well. It's not just about caring for those in need, it's about caring for everybody. So I would build on that statement more and say that it's about caring for all of God's creation and everybody in it. Okay, let's have a look at our walk for today then. So we're carrying on our revelation unit of work and our walk for today is make links between the feelings of Anna, Simeon, Mary and Joseph and explain how these feelings affected their behaviour. So we're going to look at some images and some drawings and paintings of the presentation story and those four characters that we have met in that story. And I want to really focus on their feelings and the feelings that we see portrayed in the different images and then we're going to link those feelings to why they might have felt like that, okay? So looking at our target sheet, now I know you haven't got these at home, don't worry. 
but this is our target sheet and this is the target that we're going to be working on today. So we're making links between the feelings of Anna, Simeon, Mary and Joseph and how it affected their behaviour. Okay, this is our first image of the presentation story then. So you can see we've got Simeon here holding the baby Jesus. We've got Anna, she's pictured as being a bit elderly, an older person in the temple. And we've got Mary and Joseph, okay? If you remember the uh, first lesson we looked at, we saw Joseph holding these doves and we've got him holding doves again there, okay? So have a look at the representation of the presentation story. How do you think each person is feeling in this image and why do you think that? So use what you know about these characters that we've met in the story. Why might they be feeling the way you think they are feeling? There's no right or wrong answer here really. It's what you think they feel like looking at their representation in that picture. Okay, so I'll just give you a moment to think and then I'll share my ideas with you. If you're with people, you could pause the video and discuss this or you can just think to yourself. Okay, I hope you've had a chance to look closely at each character and try and think of a good word to describe how you think they're feeling. So let me share my ideas with you. So starting with Simeon, I thought Simeon looked honoured in this picture. And the reason I chose that word because I think he's honoured to be holding the promised king. If you remember, Simeon had been promised that the king would be born before he died and he would meet him. So I think Simeon's feeling quite honoured that that promise has come true and that he's having the chance to hold the baby Jesus and lift him up for praise to God, okay? So I think Simeon there is feeling honoured. Anna then, I put amazed. I think Anna is amazed that the promise has come true. She's been spending a lot of time in the temple praying and fasting and worshipping God. And we heard that she spent a lot of time there over many years. So I think Anna's probably quite amazed that the promise has finally come true and that she has met the promised king or the promised baby Jesus. We didn't hear that God had told her that she would meet the baby Jesus, unlike Simeon. So she's probably quite amazed that she's had the chance to meet him. So for Mary, I put proud. I think if you ask any of your parents, they'll say that when they see you doing things or other people being impressed by this, who you are or what you do, they feel immensely proud. I know I'm very proud of my children, so I'm sure your parents feel really proud of you. So I thought here that Mary was probably looking on at Simeon and Anna giving such glory and honour to the baby Jesus and was feeling quite proud because she is Jesus's mother. So she probably feels really proud of the baby that she's given birth to. And for Joseph, I put thankful. Joseph wasn't Jesus's real father, we heard, but Joseph was chosen to be Jesus's dad on earth and to help raise him, and bring him up. So I think Joseph was probably really thankful and honored to have been given that role to help Mary in raising the promised king, the baby Jesus and God's only son. So I have put thankful for Joseph. Okay, we're going to look at some other representations of the presentation story. But before we do that, let's just remind ourselves why the presentation happened. So because Jesus was the firstborn, Mary and Joseph brought him to Jerusalem when he was 40 days old. Centuries before, when all the firstborn in Egypt were put to death, God had spared the firstborn of the Israelites. That was why the firstborn son was always brought to the temple. The firstborn son was presented to the Lord. In other words, he was consecrated to the Lord. So he was offered up, given as a sign of praise and thanks that the Mary and Joseph had been blessed with a baby and all other firstborn babies would have been taken to the temple at that time for them to be almost blessed by God and so that the parents could give thanks for the fact that they'd been blessed with a child from God. Obviously, the baby Jesus is extra special because we know he's God's only son and he came to fulfill the promises that had been made. So how do you think Mary and Joseph felt on the way to the temple and why? Think deeply about this one and think back to Jesus's story of his birth and what happened after his birth and what uh, Joseph and Mary had to do to keep him so safe. So how do you think Mary and Joseph felt on their way to the temple presenting their firstborn son in the temple? How would they have been feeling and why?
Okay, I hope you've had a chance to think about that or discuss it. I was thinking that although I had said before, Mary and Joseph would have been really, feeling really proud and thankful, I still think they would have been feeling like that. But I also imagine they would have been feeling quite protective and maybe a bit worried about what might happen in the temple. The temple was a busy place at that time with people going to pray and worship God and um, ask for help and offer um, gifts and praise to the Lord. So I think they probably would have been a bit nervous. Any new parent, if you ask your parents how they felt when they had their first child, they'll know that it's quite a scary experience sometimes and you want to keep the baby really safe and make sure they're protected and looked after. So I imagine as new parents, Mary and Joseph were probably a bit nervous about what might happen in the temple, and whether people would realize how special their son was or not. So I think probably a bit nervous as well as proud. Okay, let's have a look at some more presentations of the representation story. I've got that the wrong way around, haven't I? Some more representations of the presentation story. So here's another picture of that presentation story. You can see the characters again. So we've got Simeon again, he sort of stood up in front of the altar there. And you've got Anna in the background here with her hand raised almost as if she's praising or praying to God. And we've got Joseph in the background looking on and Mary this time holding the baby Jesus, okay? So it's not Simeon holding the baby Jesus in this image, it's Mary. So this is another representation of the presentation story. How do you think each person is feeling in this picture? So you hopefully will think of some different words for how each character might be feeling in this representation. Do you think it's the same as in the picture that we looked at before? Why or why not? So I, to help me with this, my tip to you is look really carefully at the body language of the characters and also their faces. See if it gives you an idea of how they might have been feeling. So again, if you've got a chance, you can discuss this with somebody you're with. If you haven't, don't worry. You can just think to yourself and then I'll share my ideas with you. Okay, so for Joseph in the background, I, put, I think he's feeling quite protective. Just his body language, the way he's sort of peering his head around, trying to see what's happening, checking that Mary and the baby Jesus are okay. They don't actually know Simeon and Anna, do they? They've just met them in the temple. So I think G uh, Joseph's feeling quite protective of the baby Jesus and of Mary. Okay, so he's just looking around there, making sure that they're okay, because it's his job that he's been given by God to help raise the baby Jesus and care for Mary and Jesus. And we heard about the angel visiting Joseph, didn't we? And telling him that that was his role. So I think Joseph there is feeling quite protective. What about Mary then? So for Mary, I put honoured. The way she was bowing her head down in that image, I thought that was almost a sign that she felt quite honoured, not only to be Jesus's mother and the mother of the only son of God, but also honoured in the fact that Simeon recognised how special baby Jesus was. So I put honoured for Mary there. Okay, what about Anna then? So I did say before, look at Anna's hands and her body language. It looks like she's offering a prayer or praise to God. So I've put that she's joyous. I thought she looked really happy and she's offering up praise to God because she's so joyous that the baby Jesus is here and that the king who was promised to come has arrived and they've recognized how special the baby is. So I think she's joyous because she's giving praise to God. And then Simeon here, I have put humbled. I thought his body language was quite reserved almost. He's not holding the baby this time. He's just admiring the baby almost. And he's just reaching one hand out almost as a sign of how special he thinks the baby Jesus is. It's almost like he's showing reverence and respect to the baby Jesus. So I thought in this present uh, representation of the presentation that um, Simeon was feeling quite humbled to have met the baby Jesus and humbled that the promised king had come and that he'd had the chance to meet him. Okay, what about in this representation then? So here's another image of the presentation story, another representation of it. What do you think the characters are feeling in this one? So again, hopefully you can think of some different words for how these characters might be feeling, or you might use some of the same words again. You might think these characters are feeling the same as they were in some of the other images that we looked at. 
So this time, again, we've got Anna in the background. It's interesting, isn't it, that Anna's always kind of pictured in the background. And again, she's got her hand raised. So she's almost like a force for good in the background, just offering up praise and thanks to God in every image. And we've got Simeon, again, in this image, he's holding the baby Jesus. And this time he's kissing him. And the way he's got his hands cradled around the baby almost is a sign of sort of how... Uh, what a gift Jesus is and how special he feels baby Jesus is. And then we've got Joseph again, sort of stood in the background behind Mary. If you look here, you can see his hand and he's holding sort of a staff behind Mary. So his arm around his wife there. And then Mary again, sort of looking on at Simeon, Simeon holding the new baby. And she's got her hand to her chest almost there. So here are my ideas for how I think the characters are feeling in this representation. So for Simeon, I put relieved. I thought he almost looks, he almost looks like a bit of a tired older gentleman in this picture, doesn't he? And I thought he looked quite relieved. He'd been promised previously that he would meet the promised king, but he's been waiting a long time. And we heard that in the video that we looked at in lesson number one, that Simeon was waiting a long time for the promise to come true. So I think he's almost quite relieved that the promise finally has come true. He's quite an old gentleman here, isn't he? So maybe we don't know how much longer he has of his life before he goes to heaven. So I think he's quite relieved that he has lived to see the baby Jesus. Now we've got Anna again here. So for her, I've put hopeful. I thought she looked quite hopeful here. The look on her face, she looked almost relieved as well like um simeon but also hopeful for what the baby jesus was going to bring and what he was going to do for the world and everybody in it so i've put hopeful for anna for joseph i've put happy i just thought he looked really happy to be a new father and uh, going back to one of the words i used previously also a bit proud isn't he that he's a new father he's got his new wife and his baby son there and actually, I'd use the same word for Mary. I think in this image, they were both just really happy to be new parents, to have been blessed with the baby Jesus and have the opportunity to raise him as their son. Okay, so you are going to be drawing your own picture today, but there are also some questions that you're going to answer. So I just wanted to read those to you. So these are the questions that you're going to be answering. And I've put these on the daily plan for today for you as well. Okay, but I just wanted to read them so that you understand the language in them. So after you've drawn your um, own representation of the presentation story, your questions are, number one, in the Bible, Simeon is described as righteous and devout. When we read that someone is righteous in the Bible, it means that they tried really hard to live in the way God wanted. How do you think Simeon lived and how do you think he felt about his life? Okay, so we know Simeon is righteous, which means he tried really hard to live the way God wants us to. So give me some examples of how Simeon lived his life and how did he feel about his life? Number two, the Bible describes Anna as a prophetess. She was advanced in years and she did not depart from the temple, worshipping with fasting and prayer night and day. How is Anna's life like Simeon's? So we can see here, just from this extract and from the video, if you remember back to lesson one, we learn about the way Anna spent so much time in the temple, worshipping, praying, fasting, giving her life really to worship God. So how is that like Simeon's life? So try and explain to me how Anna's life is like Simeon's life. Number three, throughout the Bible, Mary and Joseph always act in accordance with God's wishes. Is it easy to recognize God in other people? And do we behave as though God is part of others? So really, Mary and Joseph were blessed with a great gift and they had to be really trusting in God that Jesus was God's son and that they were going to take on the big task of raising him. So is it easy to recognize God in other people? Do we always realize how special other people are and how that we're all created in God's image? And do we behave as though everybody is created in God's image? Do we treat everybody with that same care and love and respect? And then for your go deeper question, what did God promise Simeon? So if you think back to lesson one in the video we saw, we heard the promise given to Simeon. If you've got a Bible at home or you're in school, you can look up Luke chapter 2, verse 26, and that's where you'll find the promise that God gave to Simeon. If you're not in school and you haven't got a Bible, don't worry, I've actually put that extract on the daily plan for today for you. So you'll be able to read God's promise on there. And how do you think Simeon would have felt once he heard the promise? 
So what was the promise given to Simeon and how did Simeon feel about that promise? Okay, so let me show you how you're going to set your work out. So I'd like you to write your date and your walk really neatly and underline those for me. Then you can use as much of your page as you want to, to draw a rep representation of the presentation story for me, okay? So you've seen a few examples in this video, and if you want to go back and look at any of them for ideas, just go back along the video and play any bits again you need to, to have a look at those images. So you'll need to have four characters, four adult characters anyway, in your picture. You'll have Simeon, and you'll have Anna, and you'll have Mary and Joseph. And then don't forget, you also need to include the baby Jesus somewhere on that picture. So as we saw, in some of the images, Simeon was holding the baby Jesus, and in another image, Mary was holding the baby Jesus. So it's up to you how you represent that presentation story, but make sure you've got all of those characters there. So four adults and the baby Jesus. Okay, don't forget that Simeon and Anna were older people, okay, so trying to reflect that in your drawing of them. So then once you have drawn your own image of the presentation story, I'd like you to try to answer the questions. And I've put some sentence starters here to help you. I have put on the daily plan to come back and look at these just to help you start your answers if you're finding them a bit tricky, okay. So for question number one, I put, I think Simeon enjoyed his life as he worshipped God so much. I think he spent his life, and then you can give me some examples of the way that Simeon spent his life. Number two, Anna's life is very similar to Simeon's because, so try and give me some uh, ideas there for how Anna spent her time and what she did with her life. And number three, I think it is quite tricky to recognize God in other people because, so think about uh, examples from your own life really do you always recognize how important how special everybody around you is as well as yourself you could also link to how you feel about yourself in this answer and then for go deeper God promised Simeon okay so you can use those sentence starters to help you answer those questions today because I know they're quite long questions and can be a bit tricky okay so just to remind you date and well then draw your own representation of the presentation story do take your time with it, colour it in. I'd really like to see some really beautiful images today. And I know some of you really enjoy doing these drawing activities in your RE work. So do take your time with that and use whatever resources you've got, whether it's colour pencils or crayons at home, okay? And then have a go at answering the questions for me. Okay, if you're in school, then Mrs Chamberlain can pause the video here to help you remember how to set your work out and how to answer the questions using these sentence, sentence starters. If you're at home, you might like to pause the video on this page so that you can use all this to help you set your work out neatly in your exercise book today. Okay, don't forget then when you're finished, we'll have a look at the steps to success and see how we feel about our learning today. So just to remind you, our walk was to make links between the feelings of Anna, Simeon, Mary and Joseph and explain how their feelings affected their behaviour. Then our steps of success are, I can discuss how Anna and Simeon felt when they saw Jesus. I can interpret how Mary and Joseph were feeling and I can explain how their feelings affected their behavior. Just type that, let me change that. Okay, so those are our steps to success. So have a think about those at the end when you finish your work. Have you managed to recognize how the different characters in the presentation story were feeling? And have you managed to link that to how they lived their lives, particularly Anna and Simeon, in how they spent their time? Okay. After you've finished your drawing and having a go answering the questions, you can leave a learning pit for me at the end of your work. Okay, I'll leave on this page for you. So you might like to pause the video here and use that to help you. Good luck with your work. And I look forward to seeing your pictures and your answers later today. Well done, year four.